Cough is an important defense mechanism and a means of clearing airway secretions. Cough can be classified as acute or chronic. An acute cough has historically been defined as a cough lasting less than three weeks duration and is more often associated with an infectious process. Chronic cough consists of a cough lasting greater than three weeks in duration. The incidence of chronic cough is very significant. More than 24 million visits are made annually to healthcare providers with complaints of chronic cough. Chronic cough can affect a patient's quality of life as well as their daily activity. Physical symptoms that result from chronic cough may include urinary incontinence, insomnia, and exhaustion. Acute cough is usually self-limited self -limited, and lasts less than three weeks. Common reasons for an acute cough include inflammation, such as bronchitis and pneumonia, irritants related to environmental pollutants, as well as bronchospasm related to infection. Most acute coughs are related to viral upper respiratory infections, and most will be non-productive. Younger patients tend to have a more productive cough especially in comparison with older patients who have COPD due to their decreased ability to clear secretions. An acute cough that begins non-productive and becomes productive may signal a bacterial infection has developed. With chronic cough, we're talking about a cough that lasts uh, greater than three weeks. Some sources are going to say eight weeks. There's different sources. It's, it's just a cough that won't go away that's not caused by an acute uh, infectious process. Now of course the most common cause of cough is going to be in the smoker and the chronic bronchitis but they're not going to be usually the ones that come in to see you even though they cough every day they know that oh this is caused by my smoking and so they don't usually come in and say hey I've got a cough. So we're mostly talking about people that are non-smokers. The most common etiologies of chronic cough is postnasal drip, asthma, and GERD. So when someone has a chronic cough, 85 to 90 percent of the time, those are your causes. Of course, you're going to ask about tobacco smoke and exposures and those sorts of things, but these are your primary uh, things that you want to think about. Inflammation can cause it, of course. You need to think about that, but most of that is going to be an acute onset, uh, like with bronchitis. The other thing that you want to tell people is that and this happens often, is they come in, they have a viral bronchitis. We give them an antibiotic, which we're not supposed to do. And a week later, they come back, or two weeks later, they come back and they're continuing to cough. And so they want another antibiotic. And if you're a really, really bad nurse practitioner, then you'll give them another antibiotic. When what all you had to do was tell them from the very beginning, drink lots of fluids, this is gonna go on away on its own. Uh, but what happens is that once you get that irritation and that cough going in the lungs, you need to let them know that that irritation can continue uh, for about two weeks. It depends on how much they've been coughing, how much irritation they've kind of stirred up. So tell them, hey, you're going to feel better, a lot better in a week or so, even without an antibiotic. But don't be surprised if your cough lasts a couple weeks even past that. Irritation, postnasal drip, cigarettes, uh, all of those things can uh, cause some irritation, bronchospasm, and you're thinking asthma and congestive failure, and then drug-induced with ACE probably being the most common that you see. And probably 20 to 25 percent of uh, patients that you put on ACE are going to come back in uh, with chronic cough. They're going to have no idea that the cough is related to blood pressure medicine. I mean, how would you ever connect those two unless you tell them that? And I say, you know, people do really well on these particular medications, but there's a small percentage of people who develop this cough. Now, it'll just be nagging. You won't cough anything up. It'll drive you crazy. So if that starts to happen, let me know. We'll change your medicine. Just wanted to let you know that that could happen. And that's, that's the best way to handle it. And no, people do not suddenly get a cough just because you've mentioned that that may happen with the medicine. So please don't go into that uh, kind of mentality with your patients. That's uh, very destructive. With subjective data, it's very general. When, how long have you had it? 
or what started it. Are you coughing anything up? Have you noticed anything that triggers your cough? You know, you're looking for environmental. Have they changed to a new job? Do they have a new pet? Anything at all? Because you have to, you're thinking postnasal drip, so you're thinking allergic. And you're thinking even if it's asthma, there's a probably an allergic component to it. So those are the big questions that you want to ask. Smoking history, medication history, any exposure to TB, any other history, asthma, COPD. So all the things that you would ask in relation to GERD, postnasal drip, or asthma are going to be the same kinds of questions you want to ask for a chronic cough, as well as what new medications are you on. And um, another thing about ACE is that people at a low dose may not develop a cough, but then if you increase their dose, they may then develop a cough. Some people can be on it for a long time and not get a cough, but probably six weeks is about the time that uh, the longest that I've seen someone develop a cough after they've been on it. It usually comes on pretty suddenly. So, you know, do they have any nasal drainage? Do they feel like they need to clear their throat? Lots of people won't will not realize that they are having drainage. You either drain out your nose or you drain down the back of your throat. So if you ask people if they're having drainage, they'll say no. And then you say, well, when you get up in the morning, <clears throat> do you have to clear your throat? And they say yes. And say, okay, you're having drainage. So there are lots of ways to kind of ask the questions that give you a much better answer. Do you have any history of allergy or sinus problems? Most people say no. And you say, well, at certain times of the year, does that bother you more when it's, things are blooming? So if you ask the question that way, then maybe you get an answer that's a little bit different than do you have any history of allergies? History questions that may or may not help rule out asthma would include any symptom of wheezing or shortness of breath. These questions should also include eliciting a family history of asthma, allergies, or eczema. Cough variant asthma may present with cough as the only symptom. Mild asthma or cough variant asthma may or may not be associated with dyspnea, wheezing, or changes in baseline pulmonary function. GERD is also one of the three most common causes of chronic cough. Complaints of heartburn, a sour taste in the mouth, or frequent use of antacids may determine GERD as the cause of the cough. GERD may present with only minimal gastrointestinal symptoms, nagging cough, or hoarseness. A nocturnal cough that is made worse by lying flat could signal GERD or possibly heart failure. Other causes, as previously discussed, may be the use of medications. Chronic cough from an ACE can begin anywhere from one week to six months after initiating the medication. When the ACE is discontinued, the symptoms will resolve in four days or as long as four weeks. Okay, there are a lot of diagnostics on this slide. When really your subjective information is how you make this diagnosis. Because you have to think, if somebody's coming in with postnasal drip, your subjective information is pretty much going to be your diagnostic of this. Now, you may see some drainage that allows you to verify this, or you may not. So, really paying attention and getting a good history is the most important thing. Your physical exam is going to concentrate on ear, nose, throat, sinus, lungs, and heart. You would get a chest x-ray if you tried empiric treatment and that did not work. And when I say empiric treatment, then I'm talking about trying something for uh, postnasal drip, trying something that would take care of GERD, um, trying something that may help with asthma. So those kinds of things, if they did not work, then a chest x-ray would be your next thing that you would want to think about. You can also think about pulmonary function tests. You know, is this some variant of asthma that I'm missing? You want to do a medication review? If you've done all of those things, then you could possibly uh, consider referring the patient. They may get a CT of the chest, especially if they're high risk, but if your chest x-ray is normal, that's not a very a likely test to do. They may get a pH probe. Again, this is just to rule out like a silent GERD, but the best way to do that is to treat empirically and see if it works. And if it, uh, if it works, then it was GERD, and if it doesn't, then it probably isn't GERD. So, you know, they do pH probe a lot in research, but, you know, that's listed as one of the diagnostics that you can do. Cardiac evaluation, you know, you're always thinking about congestive failure, but by now you have enough nursing experience, you ought to be able to 
look at your patient assist your risk factors and know um, whether or not that it's most likely to be congestive heart failure if that's what you're dealing with so all those things are things to think about with your diagnostics but remember you diagnose this subjectively when it comes to therapy you have to treat the underlying cause I mean you can give them cough suppressants and send them home and what are you going to do that for the rest of their life <laughs> so what you have to do is figure out the underlying cause so now we know that 85 to 90 percent of the time it's going to be post nasal drip GERD or asthma so those are going to be the medications that you want to go for if you want to try two at a time or one at a time however you want to do it all three at a time I don't necessarily recommend that because if you do that you'll never know which one actually worked so pick out the one that you think is most likely try that first tell them if the cough doesn't go away to come back so you know you've got some time to deal with this if they're high-risk patients don't take as much time to try to figure it out you know if they are 40 pack year smoker cough has changed you know you got a totally different scenario than a young healthy non-smoker person so you know COPD tobacco abuse medication therapy impacted cerumen lots of those things can uh, cause a cough and in most coughs it's multiple causes they've got a little GERD or then and they've got a little asthma or they've got a little asthma and they've got a little uh, post nasal drip so you know it's multiple things sometimes so multiple medications are needed now there are medications that you can give to suppress cough I'm not crazy about suppressing cough I'm more about finding out what caused the cough so you know these medications are listed and uh, you can definitely use those they are effective but um, cough is a symptom so you know don't just treat the symptom <laughs>